الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم It's expensive though bro Yeah I feel you What's your name Jason Jason You know my name Osman I'm assuming then you've seen the videos so that's cool I can't tell you how many videos I've watched, but I was like, man, Valdolo Park is up there. I remember you saying that you were at Valdolo yeah. Park when you were talking to uh, to David Wood and, and yeah. the other dude that's running the, the crook. But, uh, <laughs> Sam. Sam, yeah. Hasumu, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I said, so I was telling him, I'm like, oh, this is Valdolo Park around here. Let's go check this dude out. So I want to make sure I came by and meet you because I really... I appreciate it, I appreciate you, it. You know, I'm not a Muslim, but I find you really inspiring, and I think that... Uh, You've done your homework, and I told him, I said, you know, he's one of the very few few men that I've seen that really holds it down with the, with the Christians, and uh, <laughs> you hold it down tight, so... I appreciate that, man. Check out his Bible. Yeah, so this, this is dude, my... This is no hey, joke. Some, some dude tried to run away with it once. <laughs> I know. I also had a guy offer me 10,000 grand for it. But I told him I don't sell knowledge. Ah, <laughs> yeah. nice. But this is, uh, but the interesting thing about this is most people assume that I went through this to debate with people, but I really didn't. Right. Uh, when I was, th I've had this for like... 20 plus years now. Someone gave you a Some, Gideon Bible? Yeah, somebody, somebody gave it to me. No, no, somebody gave it to me. Uh, one Christian guy, he, he uh, I wanted a Bible and he gave it to me. I don't know where he got it from or whatever. But uh, I used to use this when I used to go to Bible studies at a place called Horizon. Uh, on Wednesdays, we had a youth Bible studies. And I used to just mark it up like with questions that I had that I, you know, like like all my friends were Christian that went there, but they didn't really pay attention. Like they were all like uh, trying to meet girls or smoke weed as, you know, back yeah. in the days when weed was illegal. Right? That was a big yeah. thing, right? I actually paid attention and I got kicked out of most churches that I went to for asking questions. Right? I went to Church of the Rock, they kicked me out, so on. But I was really interested. Like I, I wasn't just trying to debate because I was, you know, I was like 14, 15 years old at the time, right? And, and it just grew, like I, as I grew, you can see there are different colors, my handwriting is improved in some of them because throughout the years, you know, and you know, um, I, I find we, it interesting that as a Muslim, you know, you've done due diligence and you've studied the Bible, honestly, more, more than probably the average, the average Christian. Many of them are agreed, yeah. either cultural or just like to wear the name tag. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I, I really appreciate you coming out, seriously, man. I mean, this is really inspiring for me because one thing is like, yeah, you get people that want to just argue and debate and whatever, and, and we don't mind, like, let them come, it's okay, but that's not what we're here for. Like, we don't, like, you didn't see me go up to David Wood or, or uh, Hashimu or the crook or try to ambush them or, and, and whatever I say here is what I'll say to their face. You know what they say about me behind my back and in front of me, and now they got this new, uh, uh, prostate uh, prophet, whatever yeah, his name no, is. Prophet. Yeah. Yeah, 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 prostate prophet. Yeah, yeah, prostate prophet. Yeah, with with an F instead of a PH. He's just in it for the prophet, right? Yeah. Um, let him exactly come out. Right. Let him come out. Like tell him face us. Like you know, you, we don't bite, right? You didn't. When they came out, did you see us get angry or violent or no? no I have to say, I thought that you handled. You know, I know that they came up here. They brought all their own camera. Sam was cocky off the bat. You know, <laughs> well, he was for ten seconds. So you, you, yeah, and then where did you go? For the, you know, the other two, the, the whole video, I guess. Is uh, he, he's long, just, so. he's just good. He just, he just brave when he's in his uh, living room in front of his little webcam. Let him come here, Hasumu. Hasumu, where are you at? Come over. I'm here. <laughs> so, princess, you too. <laughs> We'll get you a garb if you're scared. What would you say is your strongest argument against Christianity in general? For you, your Good, own Great point, man. I, li I like it. Um, to be very honest with you, I, 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 I could bring all the contradictions yeah, of the Bible. Sure. You know, Bart Ehrman, I'm sure you're... you're yeah, I mean, I can tell you're, you're well-read. You could talk about the fact... But for me, I just want to talk about the core belief first, right? right. Like, uh, I was raised in San Diego, and I was raised in a rough neighborhood, right? When I went to church, I tried to understand the core concept, right? So the core concept, as was explained to me, was that, you know, God sent prophets, and I'm good with that, and then the Jews had to do sacrifices, they had to do good deeds, they had to do all this to get earn the glory of God and all this stuff. Okay, like we can talk about all of that. But then God switched it up, he switched up his rules, right? He sent his son, and again, I'm, my core, one of my core discussions is, who's Jesus? Like every Christian will give me a different answer. Some will say he's the son of God, but not God. Some will say he's the son and he's a God. Some will say he's fully God, fully man, but he is God, not the son of God, right? Like, like the, some have the Trinity, some have Unitarian, some have the Trinity different. Catholics will give you a different answer, Protestants, your witnesses, Mormons, and so on and so on. 
So, so, so the understanding that he sent his son, let's let's say son for now, right, okay. to be killed, or himself came to get killed, or that's the same. I don't know what that means, right? And he takes the burden for all our sins. Like that's my core argument against Christianity, because you know, and I know, and every logical person knows that doesn't make sense. Because let's just think of it logically. Let's say, what's your name? Brandon. Huh? Brandon Lee. Brandon. Excellent. Brandon. You're, you're a good boy, you got a good father, you, I can tell you guys are raised him well, good, polite. So I'm just giving an example, don't get offended, right? Let's say Brandon, you can lay it out, we're good. All right. Trust me. Brandon walks into a store, he decides, you know, I want that uh, Rolex and I can't, and I, I can't tell my dad to buy it from me right now, I'm young, but I'm just going to steal it. He t puts it on his hand, he walks out of the store, right? Now, he did a sin. Like, let's compare it to, he shouldn't have done it, to sin, stealing is a sin in every religion. Okay. Brandon feels bad. He remembers his good upbringing. He remembers his dad. He's like, you know what I did is wrong. He wants to make up for it. So he goes back, Adam, tree, you know, same yeah. example. And he repents in Islam. He repents. He goes, you know what, I'm sorry. Here's the watch back, you know, whatever. You know, I can come do community service if you want, whatever. I've, I'm asking your forgiveness. The store owner can A, press charges and hold you accountable for your deed. Okay, that'd be kind of mean because you came back, but he could, right? Or he could be nice about it, he could be merciful, he could say, you know what, you're a nice guy, you repented, you gave my property back, you, you, you made it right, you, you feel bad for what you did, let it go, you're good, you know, right? Makes sense. If the store owner says, no, you gotta die. This, the wages of sin is death. You gotta die. But, I'll tell you what, here's my son, who's also me, but he's also my son. Kill him, but no, 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 you can't just kill him. You gotta torture him, humiliate him, spit on him, make him wear crowns of thorns and put him up on a cross and stab him up and kill him, and then we're even. Like, come on, like, you know, that, that right there ruins it for me. Like that core belief doesn't make sense to me, right? And I don't believe that is the, the, the message of Jesus. Peace be, blessings be upon him, right? I don't believe that. Because even if you look at the Bible, Today, even with all his corruptions and changes that you know already, so I'm not going to go over, right? Even then, Jesus is saying, Father, take this bowl away from me. Well, if that was the plan all along, then he'd be like, oh, that's what I was here for. Like, you know you know what I'm saying? He w it wouldn't be a betrayal then. He wouldn't be upset about it. He wouldn't be uh, saying, the Father, you have forsaken me, right? Yeah, I think that argument, which you addressed, I think you addressed quite well with, with the, the crew that I'll leave it, the crew that came. Sure, sure. You know, and you dealt with, yeah, I think you dealt with that. And then as they tried to get into hypostatic union and all that, all that mess. Well, with, sure. You know, so I, I think that that's but, that but, to be the standard argument. But, but let, let's, let's walk that through, right? Let's say Jesus was now no longer fully God. Like, like he was somebody who was human now, so he felt the pain, he felt that. But again, then you would have to say that he's not fully God, because fully God would mean that you can do anything. You, you are not in need of anybody, right? So this is, where, this is where their own argument contradicts itself, right? This is where, the, and, and, the, and the crew that came out, the crook crew, you could say, yeah, 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 <laughs> right? Fair. They're, they're, we have Christians emailing us, telling us and messaging and posting that they they're have heresy according to what they presented with the soul and yeah, all that kind of I've stuff. I've read a lot of the comments. Which, which tells you that like, like this is not even, like they don't even understand what they're presenting, right? So to me, a very simple unified message is this. There's one creator, one God, above everybody not not a human not a monkey not a cow not a not any of that he's he is the one that created all of us right we can't put a picture to him we can't imagine him right he's above all that he created me he created you he created all of us and he guided us by sending us messengers sending us books and those books brought the same message they didn't switch it up right since the time of adam till the time of muhammad peace and blessings be upon all of them the message is believe in one god Believe in your Creator. Like, look at the Ten Commandments, right? Sure. So, you believe in one God. Don't worship idols. Don't worship people. Don't worship monkeys. Don't worship any of that. Worship that one God. Follow the Prophet of your time. If you're in the time of Moses and you follow Moses, you are a Muslim. If you're in the time of Abraham and you follow Abraham, you're a Muslim. If you're in the time of Jesus, you follow Jesus, you're a Muslim. If you're in the time of Muhammad, you're, you follow him, you're a Muslim. Peace and blessings be upon all the Prophets. We love them all. That's simple. Like to me, that makes perfect sense, right? A, a book that we have brothers standing here that have memorized it, right? A book that we have original manuscripts, a book that, that was memorized and preserved in the original language as it was revealed to a man who couldn't read or write, right? So for me, that core belief 
is the selling point, right? After that, I mean, you know, you can discuss, okay, uh, Islamic rulings on this or that, why hijab, why that? But that, that's all what we call furu, right? These are uh, secondary or, or branches. What is the base, is that core belief, right? To me, it makes sense, you know, that's it. <laughs> what do you think? So, one of the, one of the uh, one of the main questions I want to ask you, because I'm sure Excellent. that you can address well. Um, Don't know, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, I, I have complete faith in your knowledge <laughs> that you have. So, so that, not to... No pressure. Uh, I'm no, just kidding. No, and, and not just to, 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 I, I don't hit want me, to, hit me. Don't worry about no, it. There was a, so there was a time in my life where I was I was a preacher in, in, nice. in the church, yada, yada, but it's not... I'm kind of just, uh, I guess, in a limbo. Gotcha. So at this point, for a lot of the same reasons, things that you discussed. Excellent. So, um, but one of the things that was often when Muslims were dealt with, especially when I was preaching in North Carolina at the time, and, and they would say, hypothetically, they would come to the Muslim, and they would say, we would agree that God, or Allah, would, is completely self-sustaining and, you know, doesn't need anything. Sure. So they, the argument is that, so if... Allah removed all of creation, hmm. angels, the jinn, the human beings, yep. everything, and Allah stands alone. Yep. Could Allah, uh, could Allah then have, cre could Allah then have community? Mm -hmm. And the argument was no, Allah could not have a community. Therefore, Allah, uh, Allah is, it would be therefore in need of something where the Trinity itself is always a community. It's gotcha. considered, you know, the family. Sure. It's like a community. So you could take away everything, but God would still have community. Right, so, but w w why does God need community? I, I think the argument... <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me let me answer it. I mean, a lot a lot of Muslims go into the hypotheticals. They go into what the crook didn't realize was called ilm al-kalam, philosophy, and they go into Aristotle. I, I don't I don't mess with all of that, right? I'm I'm Quran was Sunnah kind of a guy, right? So let me put it this way: Allah was when there was nothing, right? And Allah, this is the, this is the beautiful thing about Allah that He's not in need of anybody else. He's not in need of community. He's not in need of a spouse or children or anybody, right? It is from Allah's wisdom and Allah's what we call irshad, like Allah chose it, that Allah created the creation, right? And when Allah destroys the creation and raises it up again, Allah will not be in need of them. If there were no angels, Allah's will would still be done, right? If Allah didn't have a arsh, a throne, he would still be where he wants to be. There is no restrictions on Allah, right? He has a throne, he has a kursi, he has a chair that we we can't imagine. Like we're not saying like, a, you know, right. But I mean, there's a hadith of the Prophet that the seven skies, everything in the, I mean, not just the universe, all above that in front of the arsh of Allah, the throne of Allah is like a small ring in a huge desert. So imagine that, right? I mean, so we're past our, so, but Allah has that as his honor. Right? Like have you seen, like I'll give you an earthly example which cannot compare to Allah, but an earthly example. Let's say there's a king, right? He's a really powerful king and he has a throne, like he has a big luxurious throne. Does he need the throne? Like if he didn't have the throne, would he still not be a king? Right. Yeah, it's enough. just his honor. So Allah, out of his honor, he has a throne. Out of his honor, he has angels. Out of his will, he created mankind. But if Allah destroyed everybody and everything was gone and he was by himself, he wouldn't need a community. He wouldn't need anybody to talk to or... See, this is a thing that people misunderstand. We as humans need wives and husbands, right? Why? Because we have needs. Like I go I go home from work sure. and, and you know, I'm tired. I don't want to go and now be cooking and making tea. Like I go home, my tea's ready, my stuff's ready. I sit down, I'm like, oh, where's my tea at, right? Gotta put enough sugar in it, right? Because that's, now my wife, she needs me. You know, when she has needs, she has emotional stuff, she wants to come talk, she needs me. When I have issues I'm going through, I need her, right? I need children. Like, like, like when my children were young, they needed me. When you were young, this man, you're his father, right? Just yeah, want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to go on a tangent and then you're like, I'm his uncle. Like, oh! <laughs> so, when you were young, he protected you, right? When you were sick as a little kid, he, he took care of you. This man put that love and that effort and you needed him. There's a time that he will get old, and he will need you we and then just talking about this on the way here <laughs> right exactly when i get old i expect my kids to change my diaper i change theirs <laughs> I, I really hope you i never come to that, to that. <laughs> no, no. i'm i'm just just messing around right but but the point there being that 
a time will come that he will need you. Yes. And when you were when you were little and he fed you with a spoon, a time may come, and Allah knows best that you may feed him with a spoon. And, and look how strong and healthy he is right now. But this that's how life goes. Oh, you're you're better than me, bro. You're better than me. <laughs> Trust me, right? So, so what does that tell you? We are in need of these things. Why? Because we're human. Allah is not in need of this. Allah by Himself is enough. He doesn't need a community. He doesn't need a son. He doesn't need a Holy Ghost. He doesn't need a wife. He doesn't. Need, if Allah chose, He would make without a wife, like Adam and Eve. If Allah chose, He would make without a father, like the Prophet Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. If Allah chose, He will destroy everything, and nobody can ask Allah why. Right? But this is this is the thing we need to thank our Creator that He's so merciful. Right? That He gave us these opportunities and He gave us this life. Imagine if we weren't born. Who would we complain to? What if, what are you going to write a complaint? What department are you going to say? I'm sorry, hey man, how come I didn't get my chance, right? <laughs> yeah, you didn't. But Allah gave, look, look at, look at, Allah gave you and you and me life. And then He gave us health. He protect, how many times in your life could you have died? Like there were times I got shot at. I, I'm sure, <laughs> we won't go there, but I'm sure if we have tea in my house, you could give me some stories, right? Guaranteed. Right? But you're alive. Allah protected you, right? You're alive. You were in the Navy. I mean, you know, it could have gone off a ship or whatever, you know, right? You could have been painting and how, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just messing around, man. We, we grew up with a lot of Marines and Navy, so we know all the stuff that go back and forth, right? We, I used to go to school. Uh, I was doing my MCSC, with the, it was all military except me. <laughs> so it was Marines, Navy, had some Army guys, which I don't know what the hell they were doing in San Diego, but uh, but the Navy guys would make fun of the Marines, right? They'd be like, call me your bullet stoppers, you know, and the yeah. Marine guys would come back to the Navy and say, you're a bunch of taxis. And the Navy guys would be like, well, who signs your check? <laughs> so anyway, side jokes, but, but the point... Uh, but the point there being, you could have died many times in life, but you're here. Right? And not just that, you're standing here, not on accident. Nothing in life is an accident. Allah brought you here and this is a means of guidance for you. Allah took you through so many things, being a preacher, bring whatever else you've been, whatever darkness and light that you have seen to come to this point. Right? Isn't that a great mercy? Right? And, and if Allah didn't do it, who would we complain to? Right? So this is the thing, we as Muslims don't get into hypotheticals. We say Allah was when there was none and He was not in need. He didn't need to have anybody. He created creation because He wanted to, not because He needed to. Right? And if He destroyed all of creation was by Himself, He'd be perfectly fine. So you would say the same if one were to say to you that Allah cannot have community. Excellent. So th this, is, this, is, this is a good, good question and a good principle to set, right? We don't say about Allah except what He reveals about Himself, right? Okay. So yeah. to say Allah cannot is not our job because how can I set rules for Allah? Yeah, but Allah yeah. does not is, is what we say, right? Meaning if somebody asks you, can there be a square circle? Right? This is a, the one we went over in the debate yes. too, but it's, it's, yes. a, it's a valid question. Can, well, we say, you know, it, it's, it's oxymoron, right? It cannot, those two don't go together. Either it's a square or a circle, right? But we say Allah can do everything. He is able to do anything, right? Now, Allah has set some principles for Himself, right? Which is Allah has said that He has no children. He has no parents, right? Surah Ikhlas. So now we say Allah does not. Can you say that Allah cannot? We don't say that. Why we don't say that is because it's not our place to put those boundaries. Allah is so great. Imagine this, right? This world that we live in has what? 7 billion people about growing daily, right? We are one planet out of what? Is it? How many is it now? Pluto's not a planet anymore. So what is it? Seven now or six or whatever it is, right? right? Okay, so planets. Whatever else they found. Right, whatever, you know, so sometimes Pluto is a planet, it's not, whatever, right? So you have my very educated mother just served us <laughs> nine pies. Nine, yeah, yeah. I remember that from <laughs> middle school or June, elementary. Yeah. So we have at least eight planets, right? And the sun. How many solar systems are in our galaxy? Uncountable, yeah. right? You look at it and, 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 and scientists are like, man, we're guessing at billions, but we don't know, right? Now that's one galaxy, the Milky Way, out of other galaxies in our universe.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in Surah Mulk that Zayyina Sama'a Dunya bi Masabi' we beautified the sky, the first heaven with these lamps, meaning all the stars, all the planets, all the galaxies, all every light you see at night, that's just the first sky. Right? Now imagine our intelligence, our our laws of physics end. Right? We we don't even know what's beyond that, right? And but scientists tell us today that there is darkness beyond that. The Quran told us that more than 1400 years ago, but scientists are just catching up to that, right? So then there is a second sky, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Now we are beyond imagination. And Allah, God, the creator made all of that. Right? And he controls all of that. He could destroy all of that, right? So Allah is at a level where we can't say about him except what he says about himself. That's it. So if somebody is to say that Allah has a son, we say, you know, the Quran tells you he doesn't. Why does the Quran? Because that's the words of Allah. Like imagine, I'm going to show you something. This is, uh, we see a lot of uh, Bible. We're going to go Quran today, right? There you go, right? Now, this is in the Quran, in a chapter called the Prophets. You have a Quran? I have a couple actually different. Ah, man, you are on, you are on it, bro. I like you. You do? Man, you got to come check out my library. I bet you. I've seen some of the stuff in the background of you. Yeah, I've got a couple of books. Yeah, I bet you do. Uh, and he is the one. This is the 33rd verse, 21st chapter, right? And he is the one who created the day and the night and the sun and the moon, each traveling in an orbit. Now, now, today, okay, that makes sense, right? Yeah, but imagine, that that, let's, there you go. What's sure. your name again? Sorry. Jason. Jason, you yeah, are, you are. Worse, but we'll go with that. We'll, we'll, we'll call you the best, whatever you like no. to be called, all right? No, no, no we're trying. Far from that. No, no, no. You're, you're, you are very respectful, very intelligent. I really appreciate this conversation. So, think about this, right? Fourteen and a half centuries ago, in a desert, Right now, Romans and Greek, they were they were philosophers. They looked at the skies. They tried to figure things out. They, they wrote about different uh, principles and physics and things. Arabs were not. You know, there's no actual complete book written by Arabs. There was poetry, like lines of poetry, but there's not like a complete book before the Quran. Okay? They were not a literary people. They were not an, in I mean, I'm not going to say they're not intelligent, but I'm going to say they were definitely not a scientific people, right? They were Bedouins. They were, they were poets, they were good at speaking, but they were never, they, you never see philosophy or, or astronomy, astrology, or numerics, numerics, or anything like that from the Arabs before Islam. After Islam, yes, they, they brought algebra. Nothing. They, they didn't even have a number for million. <laughs> they would say, alf, alf, thousand, thousand. Because they couldn't count that high. <laughs> they didn't have anything to count that high, you know, right? In that period, in that ignorance, in that darkness where they were burying their own daughters, where they were fighting over a camel, drinking from your well, and killing hundreds of people between tribal wars, right? In that period where they didn't even have a king, they didn't have an army. Like each clan had its own soldiers, but they didn't have a standing army, right? In that, a man who's illiterate, unlettered, can't read or write, even if you got him all the Greek stuff, and like, hey, there you go, right? He couldn't read it, right? How would he know the planetary bodies have an orbit. For centuries, Westerns, even after the telescope, they were discussing, well, does the sun have an orbit? Does the moon have an orbit? Does the earth, do all the planets, which ones are, you see what I'm saying? Imagine if he had guessed and got it wrong, right? Today, we wouldn't even have this, you'd be like, hey, here you go, and I'd be like, oh damn, it's over, right? <laughs> right? But, but, but if this was a guess, let's say, let's say you know the guess, you guess well, all right, okay. This is in the standard, which is the 25th chapter, 53rd verse, right? And he is the one who merges the two bodies of water, one fresh, one palatable, and the other salty and bitter, placing between them a barrier they cannot cross. Now, today, if you go to where there's a river and there's an ocean and you see it, that makes sense. But historically, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself had never been to salty waters. Right? Even if you look at the Red Sea, if you look at the river, if you look at if you look at the wells, it was all sweet water. Right? For him to get to salty water, he would have to get to Atlantic or the Pacific or the Indian Ocean or so on, right? Interesting, right? He was not he, he did travel between like for example uh, trade routes between uh, Syria and stuff, but never out where there would be salty water. So how would he know that? Right? So now 
You guessed twice and got it right? All right, well, <laughs> it's possible, right? Let's just keep going, right? <coughs> this is here in Fussilat, right? Uh, verse number nine, oh, 11, I'm sorry, right? Then he turned towards the heavens when it was still like smoke, saying to it, and the earth submit willingly. No. Scientists today, for centuries after the Prophet they did not have it. Today they say all of the heavenly bodies, planets were originally gases. They were smoke. How would he know that? Like, like you see what I'm saying? Like, like, and again, these are just a few. I have a bunch here, Mark, and I have more in my Quran at home, right? Now, you can guess once. Like if I told you, hey, I'm thinking of a number between one and 10 guess. It's a very difficult thing, but maybe you'll get it right once. But twice and a third time, and a fourth, fifth time, I'm like, hey man, that's a trick. You got something going on, bro. You put a chip in me, that was the virus thing, that's the vaccine, you, you was it? I'm just playing with you, right? Right? So it just doesn't happen like that. Now, if you get all these right, what about the fact that he brought a linguistic miracle, which, are, you know, the Arabs, what were they good at? Poetry. That's one thing they were good at. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never wrote a poem. He was not a poet. Quraysh had poets, he was not a poet, right? When he brought the Quran, it challenged all those poets. The one thing the Arabs had, right? It challenged them, hey, bring a book like it. Okay, you can't bring a bring, bring a chapter like it. Bring 10 verses like it, right? You've read that, right? Now imagine if you were the polytheist, idol worshiping Arab poets, Everybody wants that prize. Oh, I got this. You know, I'm going to take this guy on. All those poets, mum. Are there, is, are there um, historical record of that debate? Or yes, that? yes, yes, definitely. There is a book called Al Bidaya Win Nihaya. Um, if you want, I'll send you a link. I, I don't know if it's yeah. in English. I think parts yeah. are, but it's by Ibn Kathir. There is also a book called Tariq al-Tabari. I'm actually doing a series in English, so it's good, uh, about the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'll send you a link. You can follow along, yeah, and we will, sure. we will discuss the evidences. Where was that recorded? Who? Not just that. Who saw it? Who did they tell it to? This is the thing with Islam. Like, like right now, I have a study Bible, right? Since you were a preacher, I'm sure you're... You're, you're, you're well versed. I mean, so you're, we need you on this side of the table, man. You're, you would be a very valuable <laughs> asset doing, for us. You're doing quite no, I'm sure you'll do a lot better than me. No, no, no. So, in this, for example, if you go under Hebrew, now this is, you know, MacArthur is an apologist, so he's trying to defend it. Yeah. Under Hebrews, he will say, the author of Hebrews unknown. Right? Now, this is his. Yeah. statement right now when you talk about mark he will say mark never actually walked with jesus you will find that he will say there are copyist errors and this is his explanation right so i mean here you can see like about the age of isaiah he says you know this yeah, was, this was yeah, a copy yeah, yeah. there right right unlike that quran is a whole different ballgame but let's even go to the hadith right the hadith about when these debates happen we don't accept them just like a muslim said it happened no we say okay who was present there firsthand to hear it Okay, how was their justice? How was their uh, moral character? How was their uh, memory, right? Then you go past that. Okay, who did they tell it to? And who did they? When was it written down? Who all wrote it down? Is there a difference in the wordings? How many chains are there? Are, are, is there a difference that comes between them? And if there is, what is stronger, right? So not only can we show you historic evidence, we can trace it back. I personally have what's called a senate. Meaning I studied books of hadith with my teacher and he accredited me and I have that from his teacher that accredited him studying it, his teacher, his teacher, his teacher, all the way to the Prophet peace be upon him. I can give you a chain connecting me personally all the way back of who heard from who. How is it that you guys will know um, if it's all that please just... No, 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 please ask anything. But how is it that you know that through that entire narration that there wasn't a, some sort of change? Excellent, moment. excellent question. You are going to be a good student of mine, man. We're going to take this to the next level, bro. I'm, I'm really excited that good. I can speak to you in person. So I'm, so. I'm really excited talking to you, right? So what we do is it is not one chain usually. This is called a gharib hadith when you have one chain, right? What we will say is we'll look at, okay, so let's say we're standing here. What's your name, brother? Ahmed, okay. So we have Ahmed, we have Jason. Jason, yeah. Jason see, good name, right? We got you, right? Brandon Lee. Brandon. Bruce Lee. Brandon. Brandon. Bruce Lee. Hey, there you go. Don't play with blanks. <laughs> right? So, Brandon, Jason, Ahmed, Amar, right? We have Abu, Abu Sufyan, we have Shu'aib, we have Mish'al, we have all these people here, right? 
Let's say you guys go back and say, hey, we were standing there and we were talking about the Quran, right? And Ahmed, no offense, he goes, you know, they were standing there talking about the Torah. He flipped a word or he misunderstood. What we'll go is we'll say, okay, what did Brandon say? What did Jason say? What did Umar say? What did Abu Sufyan say? What did uh, Shu'aib say? What did Mish'al say? What did, okay, they all said it was about the Quran and Bible. So now we know he made a mistake, right? This is a whole science. We put the whole thing through a process to verify. Now, if all of you go back and you bring letter by letter, this is called mutawatir lafziyun, right? Letter by letter, word by word, you narrate the conversation exactly the same, then we know that you guys can't all make it up. Because Ahmed doesn't know Jason and Jason doesn't know Umar. And when you guys go on your way, you're back in Kentucky and I don't know where you're from. So, you know, you're Michigan, you're back in Michigan. You know, right? So now if he makes a mistake, it will be different than your mistake. And if you make a mistake, it will be different than Umar's mistake. But if you all bring the exact same narration, then we know scientifically, mathematically, you guys got it right. So in this, this period of time with, with the hadith, um, the things that Prophet Muhammad is, is saying, what? they're writing these things down. And this is a, a non-literary culture that's sure. doing this. Is this that they were instructed to do these things or Excellent. they just felt that it was, it was that important? Man, you are on it. I love your questions, right? So now, first thing is, as I said, the only thing Arabs were good at was poetry. So how did they, it was not, writing was considered a weakness amongst Arabs at that time. Because they expected you to be a phenomenal memories. And that's why Allah chose that time and place, right? So, so now what happened is before Islam, if you were a poet, Jason was an amazing Arab poet, what you would do is you would have 30,000 lines of poetry, right? For example, and, and your son, Brandon, would be your Rawi, for example. Rawi means he's the one that narrates your poetry. So he would memorize everything you said, word by word, letter by, they were that good at memorizing, right? He, he wouldn't write. Now, there were some that could read and write. It's not that they didn't have writing. It's just that they were not a very literal people, right? But he would memorize everything, right? So now, poets in the Arab era would speak to their children in poetry. Like if you got mad at Brendan for not putting the cat back on the milk, instead of being like, what are you doing? You, put, you, you would say a poem to get angry with him. If you were getting, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, there's a book called Alfiya ibn Malik and there's a shark called Ibn Aqil. It's kind of, and we study those, those poems of the pre-Islamic era. It's very interesting, right? So a, a poet would get mad at his wife. He would debate with her in poetry and she would respond to him in poetry. <laughs> yeah. So because they were so good at memorizing, those companions, the first thing, they memorize all the Quran. And at that time, the Prophet told him that don't write down what I say except the Quran, right? So the Quran now was written to make sure that people, you know, don't have disagreements and memorized. Later in the life, because we didn't want to confuse Quran, which is the words of Allah, with Hadith, which are the words of the Prophet, وسلم, right? So later on, when the Sahaba were able to discern between them, the Prophet said, write what I say, because nothing comes here except from the truth, right? So now you have companions memorizing, like Abu Huraira, one of the companions, he mem memorized and narrated 5,000 something a hadith, right? So people are like, how did you narrate so much? So he said, when, when my brothers, the Ansar, were busy planting their trees, meaning they were farmers, and my brothers from the Muhajirun, the people of Hijra, they were busy with trade, I did nothing but memorize. I would sit outside the house of the Prophet, peace be upon him, waiting for him to come out. When he would come out, everything he said, I would memorize it, right? So that's one thing. Amr ibn As, he was somebody who could write. Abu Hurairah says that Amr ibn As, he would write down hadith. Mm. So that means them understanding the value of it, not only did they verbally memorize it, they also wrote down hadith. Now in the first generation after them, you have a Zuhri. Zuhri is a Tabi'i, meaning these are the people that saw the companions themselves. And he started to compile hadith in a book format. Mm. And his student Malik, now this is 100 years from the Hijrah still, right? Imam Malik, he wrote a book called Muwatta Imam Malik, which is the book of Hadith. We still have it. I have it at home. We study it. I have explanations of it. So this idea that Hadith weren't written for hundreds of years and things, this is just stupidity. This is people's ignorance of history, right? So Hadith were written down in the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and memorized as the Quran was written down and memorized in the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And now, if a companion made a mistake, the other companions there, like we said, they would correct him. Right? So when you have a hadith, and we have hadith with 70 chains, like imagine that, yeah. that means Brandon, that's massive. Tell, yeah. that's massive. 
and they bring the exact same words. Mutawatir lafdiyun. It is numerous with exact same wording. So now scientifically, mathematically, they can't all make the same mistake. That means they had that memory to memorize those word by word, letter by letter. Mm. That's pretty wild. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. I knew you were you were a man of the hadith, so that's that's pretty awesome. I yeah, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a very small beginning student of knowledge. For me, however, like your videos have been very inspirational to me. They're extremely not. I love your interactions. I appreciate it. So even though you know you know even on the west coast or the east coast, you know from the west coast, you know your your things are hitting there. I appreciate it. Me, I've watched a lot of videos and a lot of different different Muslims presenting information, but it jives with me. So I think you're down to earth. I think man, I. I love the way that you deal with people as well. I think your your manners are exceptional. You, you're humbling me. I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> I just I think that what you're doing is noble, and you know it was important for me to come to meet you in person. Say thank you in person. Well, it's you know, my so, pleasure, and I, I can't uh, let you go without a gift, man. We gotta do something for you. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, how long are you gonna be in San Diego? We're leaving Tuesday morning. Yeah, like three o'clock in the morning. On Tuesday. Tuesday morning, huh? Yeah. Oh man, that's uh, yeah, we're pushing. coming up pretty quick. Yeah, uh, this way we can leave. We'll be back by Friday. My wife is already not not enjoying the time with me gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, yeah. Well. I can, is it possible I can reach out with you, reach out to yeah, you yeah, on yeah. Uh, the one message? With Definitely, no, no, I'll give you my number. Uh, brothers, if you can, uh, actually, I'll just give you my number straight. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, you can stop recording because yeah. my number is already out enough as it is. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Oh, man, I get, if I was answering WhatsApp, I would do that all day, every day. I bet you would. All right. Um, there you go. Let me. Uh, you should get a message from or a call from me real quick. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Great. Derby, Connecticut. Right? Yeah, it's actually in Sonia, but. Oh. Yeah, we'll go with it. And All right. It's Jason. I don't know what name. Jason. There, but it's Jason. Yeah. Well, I'll save it as Jason. Uh, let me do this. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that I reach out to you because. Let me. Definitely love the interaction. Uh. You know what? Uh, where, where in San Diego are you, uh, neighborhood-wise? Alcohol. Alcohol. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to, you know, before you guys go on Tuesday, I'll try to bring like a book as a gift. I mean, really appreciate you coming out, and uh, I'll, I'll meet you guys somewhere if you want to come over or whatever. I'll invite you guys over, and uh, you know, definitely want to see you before you leave. Really appreciate your mannerisms and. Uh, and so I'm waiting for you to become Muslim so you can take over and hey, I could retire, I'm man. Not, I'm not about taking over. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, you know, if I were to head in that direction, you would be the man I would love to sit under for sure. Well, we got classes. They're all free, man. That's Come on great. down, man. So I appreciate, you. appreciate Thank it, you so Jason. Thank, Thank you. you. Brandon, stunts and blanks. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. Well. Really appreciate you being out here. Thank you. جاء الحديث بغربة الإسلام فهي بك المحب لغربة الأحباب والله يحمينا ويحفظ ديننا من شر كل معاند سباب إذا أعجبك الفيديو لا تنسى الإعجاب والتعليق ولكي يصلك كل جديد اشترك الآن